in the first few lectures we started with the unconstrained optimization and then we in the last lecture we kind of looked at constrained optimization and that too using a uh, augmented lagrangian right so just to briefly recap so we are looking at problems of the form okay and what did we construct uh, in order to solve this so we looked at something called augmented lagrangian right which was of the form let's say you have the current value so essentially you construct a lagrangian let me call it c which looks something like this right we looked at the convergence mechanism this for augmented lagrangian methods or method of multipliers so if we if nu goes to nu star the nu star is the uh, like if you look consider the original lagrangian nu star is the optimal dual uh, variable for the equality constraint if nu goes to close is close to nu star and c goes to infinity right then you can show that uh, x that minimizes this augmented lagrangian would actually go close to x star right so that was the idea and the reason we add this particular term over here is because we want to regularize the landscape we want to make it much smoother potentially convert non convex problem into convex problem and so on so today we are going to be looking at uh, i mean sort of looking at the algorithm i mean last time we sort of discussed the convergence mechanism but today we are going to be looking at the algorithm algorithm uh, which is the, and then that would also lead to something called eventually uh, something called dual decomposition and through dual decomposition we would then be introduced to this alternating direction method of multipliers okay all right so so how does this algorithm work so let's say we are at iteration k so we are looking at method of multipliers okay so we are at iteration k and at kth iteration you define you find your xk which is essentially arg min okay so xk is essentially the arg min of so so far we know that we can solve one constraint optimization problem relatively easily using either gradient descent or heavy ball or other things right so we are going to run uh, and we are basically going to solve or basically minimize the unconstrained lagrangian which is uh, in fact unconstrained augmented lagrangian right so given the value of nu k the current value of nu k and the current value of this uh, c this constant ck or the coefficient ck we are going to find our xk then we are going to be updating nu k plus 1 using uh, okay so this is how we are we will be updating nu k plus 1 so the hope is that this eventually converges to nu star right that's when your x would also converge xk would converge to x star so if this converges to nu star then this would converge to x star right that's that's the idea and in order to do so we also need to ensure that c also becomes very large right so that means we would also be updating our c like this where beta is greater than 1 and typically beta is i mean and there's no particular rule but typically beta is chosen to be a number between 5 and 10 so this is your algorithm okay this is the this is your algorithm and let's try and see how why this particular choice of nu k plus 1 and so on okay are the steps of the algorithm clear what happens at kth iteration so this way you update your uh, new iterates and in the next iteration k plus 1 then you would find xk plus 1 using the 
CK plus 1 that you have obtained or updated and the new K plus 1. So, there you are going to be running gradients. So, so far we know that we can solve unconstrained minimization problem, right? Unconstrained optimization. Uh, I mean, obviously, here we are assuming that we can solve it exactly, but uh, I mean, the results exist where even if you solve it approximately, it still works. So it's it. Yeah, yeah. But satisfy. I mean, satisfiability of constraints is is, is important here, right? It's fine. I mean, if, even if it's. Minimum, so you will be at one of the local minimas, but the, I mean, if you can still, I mean, uh, so again, assuming nu goes to nu star and c goes to infinity, you would be able to do so. So, we will we'll come at an example where you would, you would see that, that to, like, I mean, you will see that in action. Like the first thing. Yeah. In right. Then what will x come? Because you are not able to minimize that. It will be again, like, you can only provide local guarantees. So, you, it will converge to one of the local. As I said, like, if it is a non convex function with the multiple, with multiple local minima, in general, it is, it is impossible to provide global guarantees, right? In general. Right, so we can only talk about like uh, local guarantees there, right? But if it, it's if it's a different kind of stationary point or maybe uh, a case where like uh, I mean PL inequality kind of non-convexity, then you can I mean you can provide global guarantees. Sir, so, we understand that we want C to be as large as possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was. I'm going to come to. Uh, so, what is the Lagrangian at c k x nu k? So that is f of x k plus nu k transpose h of x. I'm sorry, there is no x k. Okay, if you were to minimize this unconstrained Lagrangian with respect to x, so you would set the derivative, that is the first step, that is what you are trying to, so you would want to ensure that this goes to 0, right. For the given value of nu k and c k, this, I mean this is the first step, yeah, no, I mean this is, this is what you are trying to min, oh sorry h of x here. Yeah. Okay, this is what you want. Now, what is the derivative of this? Yeah, so if I set the derivative, this you want to set to zero, right? I may mean, assume this is a point element wise of multiplication. So, this this you want to set to 0, right, ok. So, this is this is coming from the augmented Lagrangian part. Let us say you are not looking at augmented Lagrangian, you are looking at the original Lagrangian, ok. Suppose that is the case, you are looking at the original Lagrangian. And in the original Lagrangian, your L would be L x nu is simply f of x plus nu transpose h of x. And if I take the derivative and set it to 0, that is the stationarity condition implies. So, at the optimal point nu star, right. Yeah, x also needs to be optimal. So, at the, let us call it x star, here we will call it x k whatever. So, we basically we want this to go to nu star, right. And that is why this particular update nu k plus 1 is nu k plus c k h of x k. Because if this goes to nu star and c goes to infinity, then you know that x k would go to x star. So, that is how this particular uh, update for the nu k plus 1 or nu k uh, comes into picture.
So this is the method of multipliers or the, al the basic algorithm. Uh, again, we are uh, we do not assume the value of we, we do not know the value of new star. We are just running this, but then it would happen that this converges to new star, and if c goes to infinity, then you you are done. The other thing that you can uh, lo uh, look at from here is uh, h of x k. So why do you need c to go to infinity? If you look at h of x k. It is simply nu k plus 1 minus nu k divided by c k. And if you want the equality constraints to hold, then you want the right hand side to be almost 0 and that happens when c k is very large, right. So this is another reason why you need c k to go to be very large. In fact, it turns out that for most convex optimization problems, you do not even need c k to be very large. And in fact, even for non convex problems, you again you do not need CK to be very large as long as it is above certain threshold this would work, ok. So let me write down one particular result, we are not going to prove this but uh, it is a proposition. So let f and h are continuous functions and Numerous functions and the constraint set is non empty. Okay. So for k equals zero, one so on let x k be the global minimum of the optimis of the following optimization problem subject to uh, x k. So, where nu k is the sequence nu k is bounded and 0 less in c k is less than c for all k with c k going to infinity. So, then every limit point of the sequence is a global minimum of the original problem. So, as long as your sequence nu k is bounded for every k and you have the strict monotonicity in your ck's with ck going to infinity then the sequ this basically sequence xk converges to x star is what it says ok. So, this is this is the in fact this is the result that kind of that you can use to essentially prove that this method of multiplier works. But what is one particular caveat with this? I mean so far we assume that we can I mean in this case x k happens to be we assume that x k happens to be the exact minimizer of the augmented Lagrangian right. And even if you are going to use certain algorithm to run this in a minimization uh, you can maybe only approximately solve this right. So, what what happens if we only approximately solve this? So, can what can kind of guarantees we can provide? So, so assumes so caveat is it? It assumes that uh, we can do exact minimization of of the augmented Lagrangian, right? Uh, 
So the question is if we cannot do an exact minimization if you run any numerical algorithm. So what, what kind of guarantees you can provide and it turns out that even in that case, so this algorithm is fairly robust. So it says let xk for So essentially what you have to say is so given your CK and given your new K this gradient of the augmented Lagrangian if that is let's let's say you try to make it smaller than some epsilon K okay so that means you are only approximately solving the uh, first step or the the inner minimization here so if you only approximately solve it where uh, where uh, nu k is bounded and bounded and let the sequence epsilon k and c k satisfy zero less then you can show that the next k basically converges to x star which is the solution to the original problem. Where x star is such that That's where you assume that the rank it, it's a, it has a full rank, uh, so Grindr which X as rank M, and if it has a full rank, then you can also show that nu k plus c k h of x k also goes to nu star. Okay, so again we are not going to prove these results, but I mean what this result essentially states is that even if you in, uh, solve the inner minimization not exactly as long as you ensure that the sequence epsilon k converges to 0 and that is what you eventually want right because as you are closer to the optimal solution you would want to find the optimal solution uh, better but you can start with larger values of epsilon k and that is fine too. So you may not exactly solve it in the first few iterations uh, only towards the I mean at larger iterations is when you are trying to solve it uh, I mean more sort of exactly or if that even if that is the case you I mean augmented Lagrangian or the method of multiplier it still works ok. So in general it is a pretty robust algorithm. So, so algorithm is fairly robust is what we are trying to indicate but there are cert certain practical issues. And let us try to look at it through the example that we looked at in the last lecture. Let us consider the same example. You, you, you have f of x given by uh, half x1 square plus x2 square. So the problem is minimize f of x subject to x1 equal to 1. Okay. And what are the optimal solutions? What is the optimal solution rather? So x1 star x2 star is 1 comma 0 and what did we find for new star? Minus 1 right ok. So let us look at the augmented Lagrangian for this x new that turns out to be half x1 square plus x2 square plus uh, c, c by 2 times x1 minus 1 whole square plus nu times uh, x1 minus 1 ok. What is the gradient of uh, 
gradient of this Lagrangian because we are running in a minimization. So, we need to compute the gradient for sure. So, what is the gradient of this with respect to x? So, with respect to x1, it is going to be uh, x1 plus right and with respect to x2, it is simply going to be x2. Okay. What about the Hessian with this like Hessian it is I mean if you want to call it x6. What does the Hessian matrix look like? What is the first term? 1 plus c 0, 0 and 1. So, if you look at this particular Hessian, what happens at when c is very large? It is very ill conditioned right. Okay. So, when c is very large, one of the eigenvalues is going to be very large right. So, as c goes to infinity, matrix is ill conditioned. And that is when you may have practical issues in uh, when you are trying to minimize this particular Lagrangian right. So, what happens when you have ill conditioning? Your function level curves they look something like this right. Maybe, so, in one in one particular direction you may be making pretty good up, update, but you, your updates in another direction would be very small right and it would take a lot of effort for you to get to the optimal solution a lot of iterations. And how can one avoid such issues when you have ill conditioning? So, one, one thing is one about starting point good initialization, but how do we make it in like invariant to this? or not invariant rather, but like I mean how can what is one way to sort of invert the effect of uh, use a Hessian inverse right that Newton's method. So, so one way out is use Newton type algorithm and what Newton type algorithm does is once you do Hessian inverse basically if you have large sort of uh, different con curvatures along different directions it basically tries to I mean sort of changes the landscape to a maybe concentric circles like these right. So, that is one one way to so instead of running simple gradient descent you can try Newton's type method on this because as because as c becomes large then you would have this issue that uh, the matrix is going to be ill conditioned and you would have difficulty in arriving at the uh, optimal solution. I mean it will still converge, but it will converge very slowly right. The other suggestion was use good starting points if I use a starting point somewhere over here then it would converge maybe in lesser iterations, but generally that is not known right. So, use good starting points and the other thing is in increase c k not at a very large rate like you need not need not use very large values of beta like 5 or 10 maybe you can use a moderately large rate like let us say beta is 1.5 or something like. So, you do not increase beta c too much. So, increase c k at a moderate rate. So, that you are already closer to the optimal solution before c starts becoming very large ok. Is this thing clear? All right. So, so, let us look at one particular step of this uh, for this particular example, let us look at the first step which is minimizing this thing right. So, if I try to minimize this thing what what would be the x 2 k? So, again how did we define x 1 or x x k? x k was defined to be arg min of l c k x nu k right. So, the, if one, if you want to find argument of this, essentially we need to find x1 and x2 that minimum that basically sets this gradient to zero, right? So x2 k is simply zero, right? So x x2 k is zero. And what about x1 k? It's at it basically you set this to be equal to zero, right? For for c k and u k. So x1 k would satisfy x1 k plus nu k plus c k. 
this should be equal to 0 right yeah x1 plus c times x minus 1 plus mu okay okay which basically gives you x1 k as c k minus okay okay now let's look at the second step of this algorithm which is this particular nu k plus 1 is defined to be nu k plus c k times h of x k so nu k plus 1 is defined to be nu k which is nu k plus c k times h of x k is x 1 k minus 1 is nu k plus c k times which is equal to nu k. So, minus 1 minus k. right ok. So, what, what do you get? nu k plus 1 is nu k minus c k into 1 plus nu k 1 plus c k. So, if you if you if you sort of uh, I think just do a simple algebraic manipulation you can huh? yeah you can and as you using the fact that nu k star or nu star is basically minus 1 you can show that uh, nu k plus 1 if I just subtract nu star from both these equations which is minus 1 here right it turns out to be nu k minus nu star divided by 1 plus c k. Now, if I look at this particular uh, if I look at this particular update. So, what is this update doing for any value of c k greater than 0 this is basically defining a contraction on nu k. So, you are getting closer and closer to nu star your nu k plus 1 will be closer to nu star than nu k was right for any value of c k greater than 0. So, if you look at what this algorithm is trying to do it is essentially defining a contraction like basically you are getting closer and closer to nu star with every in fact rather monotonically for any value of c k greater than 0 right. So, this is how this particular algorithm works uh, you are I mean essentially inherently you are trying to make sure that nu k goes to nu star and if c k is very large then this rate of contract like basically it qu quickly try to tries to go to nu star, but at the uh, expense of making possibly making the in the first part relatively ill conditioned right. So, again there is a trade off that way, but this is what this algorithm is doing. So, for any value of c k greater than 0 this particular works and it may also make sense because this is a convex problem ok. So, let us let us look at a problem which is not convex and uh, I think it would be much uh, useful to look at the role of c k then becomes very important. So, So, the same problem pretty much, but then instead of half x 1 square I will just to make it minus x 1 square. So, again what are the optimal solution or what is the optimal solution here x 1 star x 2 star same as 1 0, but it turns out the nu star in this case is equal to 1 and not minus 1 because nu transpose when you do nu transpose you get minus x 1 from here right. So, nu star turns out to be 1 and not uh, minus 1. Now, let us see what this like the different steps of the uh, method of multipliers look look like. So, when I say x k is arg min uh, arg min of L of c k x nu k this basically gives me x k. So, I am skipping all uh, I mean the algebra here, but I think it is clear as to how to derive this right. So, it gives c k minus nu k c 
minus C k minus one. Okay, which basically goes to x star one comma zero as C goes to infinity, right? Okay. And u k, I mean, even if nu k doesn't go to infinity, it's still a nu k doesn't go to nu star. It's still C k goes to yeah. But the interesting thing happens when we try and write uh, the second step, which is nu k plus one. So nu k plus one here is essentially uh, you can show that, or rather, nu k plus one minus nu star with nu star equal to one now. This turns out to be nu k minus nu star divided by c k minus 1. Now, unlike the previous case where any value of value of c k worked, in fact, for a value of c k bit which is let us say you end up choosing c k as 1.5. So, this is a diverging sequence now, right. In fact, nu k will get farther and farther away from nu star. And in order to guarantee that this converges, you have to choose a value of c k greater than 2. So, we must choose So remember in the previous lecture we said as there is there exists some c bar as long as c is more than c bar this would converge. So as long as you choose ck and even if you do not increase uh, I mean the value of ck even if you choose ck to be uh, like keep, you keep it constant but maybe choose it to be 2.5 or let us say 3 or 5 or something like that right this algorithm would still converge. In practice because we do not know what c bar is we keep increasing the value of ck so that it eventually hits the c bar. But then uh, as long as it has hit the C bar, the algorithm would converge and it will give return the correct solution, okay. So that way as I said algorithm in general is very robust. Is this clear? So I hope this example is, I think suffices, right. So what is happening when we choose C to be more than 2? So, if I look at the augmented Lagrangian with c more than 2, so I am adding actually uh, something basically when I add this particular h of x norm square constraint with c more than 2, I am essentially trying to negate. So, there is a non convexity because of this term, and in fact, the problem is making it strongly convex, not just convex, it is making it strongly convex by adding that thing, right. So, it makes a landscape not just I mean it converts the non-convex problem not just into a convex problem but also a strongly convex problem right. So that is why uh, these kind of algorithms are sort of uh, I mean fairly used in, in for constraint optimization problem ok. So, so no need to increase c k to infinity for convergence as long as c k is greater than 2 ok. Any questions on this? Yeah, yeah. So, we will will talk about the convergence rate soon, but let us let us also look at the in uh, I mean we can so we know that we can solve the uh, equality constraint optimization. How about inequality constraint optimization problems? So, now we are trying to so this is our primal problem minimize f of x subject to let us say h of x equal to 0 and g j of x So, based on what you have seen so far, how can you leverage the same tools to solve this uh, inequality constraint optimization problem? Is it possible to convert an equality constraint optimization problem to equality constraint optimization problem? Then we can leverage the same tools, right? No, right? 
you still have lambda greater than equal to zero. So you want to work with yeah. Let's say I add uh, slack. So what kind of slack do you want to add? So let's say I add to g j. I add a slack variable z sub j. But then we want z, z sub j to be greater than equal to zero, right? So we want to completely get rid of the uh, any inequality constraint. The idea is right. I mean, you are in the right track. But then you want x plus to be greater than x minus, right? So adding slack variables is fine, but uh, and in fact that's what we are going to do. So okay, so th the I mean essentially we want to convert this to equality constraint, right? Without having any any additional uh, inequality constraints into picture. So you are going to add slack of this form. Now zj can be unconstrained. Okay. So this way you can convert inequality constraints to equality constraints, right? So okay. So what is the augmented Lagrangian now? So now the now in now in this case you 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 essentially have two primal variables x and z. Okay. There will be one dual variable uh, which well I mean multiple dual variables however you want to call it one corresponding to h and similarly cor corresponding to g because, but these are equality constraints uh, but then the z is now a primal variable here right so if i were to write the augmented lagrangian i would write this as a function of xz nu and let's say i'm also going to introduce lambda for this equality constraint rather and it will be of this form f of x plus uh, new transpose h of x plus c by 2 norm h of x square plus c by 2 Okay, so this is your augmented Lagrangian now. So now, what what do your updates look like? Yeah, is there a question? Not a function of x. Why should it be a function of x? Equal to the of x. No, right? The negative uh, equality. Mm -hmm. And that basically the value of z will depend upon the function's value. Right? Yeah, I mean that that is true for any variable, right? Like any even x one would be constrained on x two and so on. But then, I mean, as it is, like it uh, implicitly they are functions of each other, but explicitly it is not, right? So, so your method of multipliers, how does it look like now? So, what would be the first step now? So, in the previous case, we were getting xk. Now, we will be getting xk and zk as argument of Okay, so that's step one. Step two is updating your new k, right? New k plus one was you have a step three, which is 
L lambda update. So, lambda update is lambda k plus c k times g of x k or rather lambda j if I want to call it. And the fourth up, fourth step is updating CK plus one, right? So this is how you can uh, work with inequality constraint optimization problem. So we know that as K goes to infinity, uh, this term kind of goes to new star, right? What about this particular term? What is lambda star? this does not tell you that it is going to be more than 0, right. So, in fact, you can show, so let us say if, if I if I had solved this problem using uh, inequality constraints, right. So, you would have gotten a dual variable corresponding to inequality constraint and let us call them lambda star. So, max of 0 and lambda j k plus c k d of j x k. So, in fact, you can show that this goes to lambda j star, ok. But I mean that is not super important, but that is I mean just for your reference. So, this particular term actually goes to because you want them to be lambda j star, you know they are going to be greater than or equal to 0 if these are the, these are dual variables corresponding to the inequality constraint. So, max of 0 plus and this particular term that actually goes to lambda j star, you can show that this is the case. They, they are not the same that is why I am saying that max of 0 this term this is this goes to lambda star. Not that that is these for these I mean if one of them is without let us say if it is satisfied with the if the inequality constraint is active right. So, then because of complementary slackness lambda j is going to be 0 if it is inactive then it is going to get some certain value. So, yeah. Okay, so this is this is uh, this is your method of multipliers. Uh, 